top nine financial terms you should know. Hi, my name is Nira and welcome to my channel. Today we will learn nine financial terms everyone should know to navigate the market. To become a better investor, you need to learn the language first. You hear different financial terms in news channels like Bloomberg, CNBC, CNN, in newspaper articles, or any other social discourse. It is very easy to get confused when you don't know what the critical terminology means. In this video, I will go through nine financial terms that I think are important to know. Number one, bear market. It is a 20% or more market decline from recent highs for a sustained period of time. It happens when investors want to sell rather than buy and opt for safer options like cash or fixed income securities like bonds. Some of the most prominent examples include the Great Depression of the 30s, dot-com bubble in 2000 and the housing crisis of 2007 and 2008. Number two, bull market. It is the opposite of bear market when prices for stocks, bonds, commodities and other financial instruments rise 20% or more for extended periods. In both bull and bear market, it is unclear how long they may last. It could be several months or years, so it is not advisable to try to time the market. It is just good to know where we stand and navigate the market accordingly. Number three, blue chip stocks. Blue chip stocks exclusively. This term is believed to be derived from poker where blue chip has the highest value in a three color set. In stock market, these are referred to well-known and established companies that have a strong performance history and have a good reputation in the market to operate profitably in good and bad times. Some examples include Apple, Amazon, Alphabet, parent company of Google, American Express, and etc. Number four, capital gain. It is the increase in your asset's value and is realized when the asset is sold. For example, when you buy a stock for $50 and a month later the same stock costs $70, you have $20 in unrealized capital gains because you haven't sold the stock yet. Let's say you decide to sell the stock a week later when it is at $65. Your realized capital gain is $15. Capital gain is not only used for stocks but any other type of assets like bonds, real estate, even furniture or boat, given that you sold them at a profit. Number five, compound interest. If you watched my previous video on investing for beginners, you may know this already. Simply put, it is the interest you earn on interest. For example, if you put $10,000 in an account that pays 1% in interest annually, in a year you would earn $100, bringing your total balance to $10,100. The next year, you will earn interest on $10,100, which is $101. The one dollar is what you earned on last year's interest earnings. From this demo table, you can see every year you earn more in interest because it is compounding from the interest earned in the previous year. Number six, defined contribution plan. It is the most common workplace retirement plan in which an employee makes before or after tax contributions towards the plan and the employer typically makes a matching contribution. 401k is the most commonly known defined contribution plan. It says right here we have $401,000. Uh, that says you have a 401k account. You can ask your employer of the availability and the terms of their 401k plan. It's usually a waiting period to enroll and a waiting period to keep all of your employer contributions towards your plan. There are others such as 403b, 401a, 457, thrift savings plan, and savings incentive match plan for employees, known as SIMPLE. Number seven, a Roth IRA. It is an individual retirement account to which you can make after-tax contributions. Neither the contributions nor the earnings on those contributions will be taxed. And that's tax-free money. What do you mean tax-free? Given certain conditions are met. These conditions include withdrawing the money at age 59 and above, given that the account has been open for at least five years. There's also a limit to how much you can contribute. Number eight, dividend. It is a distribution of profits by a corporation to its shareholders. For example, at the end of the year, the company made $100,000 in profits. It wants to invest in a project that costs $60,000. The remaining $40,000 it decides to distribute to its 1 million shareholders, since it is not considering any profitable project. Each investor receives four cents per share. If for instance you own 2,000 shares of this company, you will receive $80. Typically, dividends are paid quarterly. Number nine, rebalancing. This term was also mentioned in the previous video. It is the process of buying and selling assets in a portfolio to bring them to the desired or initial asset allocation or risk. Let's look at an example. Consider that you invested 50% in stocks and 50% in bonds. Over time, given that the value of your stock increased more than the value of your bonds, 
Your portfolio is now 70% stocks and only 30% bonds, which is considered much riskier portfolio. Given your target of 50% stocks and 50% bonds, you will have to sell some of your stocks and buy some bonds in order to bring your portfolio back to the target. These were the nine financial terms that I wanted to share with you today. Thanks for watching. Check out my video on investing for beginners.